I'm Dr. Bart Rademacher, prescription for your transformation, real people, real conversations, and real success. And today is all about the art at Burning Man and the incredible individuals that share with us their genius, their talents, the, their greatness in their art, and more importantly, what's really behind the art, the per people behind the art, the person behind the art, and also what their message is. And talking about messages, it's, it's our ability to communicate with the world around us and beyond. And that's what this is all about. And without actually delivering to you myself the message, I'm excited to be introducing Ilya Berenikov and his incredible art. Ilya, thank you so much for joining. Thank you. It's, my, it's a pleasure. So, so give me a little background first um, about yourself, the kind of art that you do, and then what I'd like to do is jump into the actual Burning Man experience, your experience, what brought you there, and then more importantly, the real form of art. Because one thing that I want to share with people is that for those who aren't the artists, or even those who are the artists, you know, we get to enjoy the incredible talents around the world. And it takes a lot of work and effort to make that art ha happen. So our support to all the artists, not only in appreciating and sharing the, the experience, but also helping them themselves. And that's the purpose of this platform as well. So Ilya, tell me about you. Yeah, so um, thanks for the intro. That was really nice. Um, I've, I was born in the former Soviet Union in, uh, in Leningrad, which is now St. Petersburg. I came to this country um, through a amnesty program uh, because my uncle was a uh, fine arts painter and he had some questionable um, opinions about the regime in place at the time. Um, and I don't know if any of you guys are aware, but there was also not just a Cold War of military or space uh, race. There was also a uh, cultural war happening at the same time. So my uncle basically got amnesty and was contacted by the CIA and was given amnesty. The family that I was in was taken to the United States. Um, and so that's kind of how I got to the country. Um, and my kind of um, expressions with art started pretty early, I guess. Uh, art, music, um, just self-expression in general. Um, and I really appreciate all forms of art um, and uh, music as well. Um, do you want me to go into Burning Man? Yeah, go ahead. You know, this okay, is so, this is all about you. Remember that. Yeah, great. So I I came to Burning Man. F my first year was 2012, um, and I was probably 25 at that point. Um, and I just had my mind blown, just like everyone else there, and saw a lot of um, art and amazing people and openness that I'd never really experienced before. Um, and it just resonated with me uh, to the point where I made it. Um, my mission to get involved in our in our in an artistic sense um and my kind of journey from that point has led me all over the place all over the world building installations for festivals um doing gallery shows releasing music um so it really sparked this kind of feeling of um acceptance of my artistic expression that i didn't feel um growing up or you know in the community that i was in before so yeah, one of the things that I think is absolutely brilliant about Burning Man, and, and for all those who are not familiar with it, this is an incredible event uh, where you know thousands of people, you know, about seventy thousand people migrate to the middle of the desert in north of Nevada, and bring all sorts of artistic forms there. And what's brilliant about that is that as as a um, an artist you're expressing your art to not just people who are um, viewers of your art, but they're also participants of the art. And that's what makes it so different. And the other part is, is that, you know, any art form is very much legitimate, legitimized in that arena. And so all art is, 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 is available and not constricted by the norms of, of what society feels is appropriate. And so that's mm -hmm. wonderful about that is that you can totally express yourself in ways that otherwise is not possible. So my question for you then, Ilya, is, is how is it that you actually got to, to Burning Man? What was the inspiration to get there? And, and now the inspiration and, and the impact, I guess, you kind of alluded to there for a moment 
of how it's helped you expand your business. Okay, yeah. So <clears throat> I guess I went through a very rough time when I was younger, uh, passing of my mother, uh, some drug addiction problems. And I basically uh, had to get out. The only way I was going to get out of these problems was physically to leave. So um, I came to Los Angeles and I met some really awesome people. Um, and I joined a little commune of artists and musicians. Um, and they basically brought me to my first music festival, uh, which was lightning in a bottle, I believe. Actually, sorry, Lucidity. Um, and from then on, I just fell in love with the atmosphere, with the collaborative yes. art, artistic expression, with the melding of, of the um, music and the art together and creating environments instead of just having like a, a stage that pops up and some guy that comes on and sings and everyone's just consuming it that way. I feel like the collaborative environment uh, yeah. with, with visual and musical artists together is, is really powerful. Yeah, that, I think that's so unique and brilliant about what Burning Man has to offer. And, and again, it's that opportunity to express yourself in ways that you normally can't and just find a wide audience that, that just loves the work. And so um, what has, you know, so you've been to Burning Man a couple of times, you've presented your art. What, what kind of artist are you? What, what is your art then? So um, I feel like the basis of my art uh, is kind of trying to tie in these two worlds that exist in me at least, or what I perceive to exist, um, which is the spiritual, ethereal kind of transient world with this physical that one that we live in and both of them have kind of connotations of the other in, inside of them and what i try to do is take the the um kind of ethereal or spiritual worlds and try to transmute them into some sort of physical arrangement through art through sculpture through music something that uh brings and ties those two worlds together i feel like yeah, I uh, I have I looked at some of your uh, your artwork here, and what I'd like to do is just share a little bit of that um, with the audience, and then we'll actually go into uh, what's coming up with uh, Burning Man. Okay. So uh, let me just share, and you can share with us, um, you know, um, some of this art here. So um, some amazing, let me see, some amazing things that you're doing here. These are all structures that you've created, is that correct? Yeah, correct, yeah. So uh, what is this? Uh, that is a, a piece in progress from a gallery show in Central California. Um, and it's using laser cutting and some abstract kind of painting style um, and stacked paper. Love it. Thank you. And this that piece is kind of interesting actually it's um a layered um piece of stretched film uh stretched uh plastic film that's stretched so tight it's like a canvas and you basically can't see you know those pranks where you put this the the saran right. wrap over the door and they run through it uh right so essentially i did the same thing except i, I put stencils on it so that uh it created a 3d almost sculpture inside the piece so when you walked around that um kind of indigenous figure uh, that i was representing would his eyes would follow you around the room uh because of the depth that was created oh, brilliant thank you and this yeah that is a piece of walnut um that was i designed um on the computer actually it's not hand carved unfortunately uh, and uh, CNC routed with a, um, a machine. So, um, yeah, but designed on the computer by me. Yeah, amazing. I love the work that you do. So um, I'd like to go into uh, the idea of Burning Man. So I'm going to show a video that, that you have. And so just give the, the listeners, viewers, just a tease as to you know what they're about this experience and what this is all about so um my kind of way of looking at the world in an objective way is to look at this planet and try to answer some of the questions about why we're so conflicted with each other why there's so many wars so many so much famine so much hostility 
And my kind of understanding of it now is that we're almost in this cabin fever as a civilization, as a species living on this planet with no external reference as to who we are, where we've come from, and no guidance from anyone that's, you know, a little bit more intelligent or advanced than us. So this is, our installation is almost a um, uh, contacting uh, or sending a message out into deep space um, to a star cluster that we're receiving anomalous signals from uh, that SETI's been receiving for the past two years. So it's our kind of our, um, uh, because the only thing that, that anyone's ever heard from us is uh, nuclear bombs going off in the EMF range and um, some scientists sending some very basic information about us. And I wanted something that sends out uh, messages from participants at this event and other events um, that kind of uh, address some of our more personal opinions and thoughts. And um, yeah, basically <laughs> you can roll it at that, I think. All right, well, let me roll it here and then. Might be missing the audio on this. Say that again? I think you're missing audio on it, uh, unless you just want to play the visuals. Uh, I'm hearing the audio. You're not hearing the audio? No, I don't think so. Okay, might I'm be, not sure. Playing... Well, what I'll do is I'll leave a link there. Um, yeah, I, I'm hearing the audio, but uh, we'll see uh, if if it displays later on. Yeah, totally. Yeah, essentially the installation is, is taking messages from participants and sending them out uh, into outer space using a high power narrow bandwidth laser. Um, and we're taking the messages uh, and, tra and transferring them into a basic binary format um, right. and sending those out over 93 light years to this, um, to this area in the Hercules constellation that's... Um, that's pretty interesting. There's a wow signal that happened in the 70s. I don't know if anyone's familiar with it, but um, uh, we basically had this very strange, unnatural signal that came in, and um, now we're getting one again that's pretty constant from this one area. So I feel like that's really interesting. Yeah. So is this the first time that um, this project is there at Burning Man? And, and what's the name yeah. of the project? The name of the project is In Case We Miss Each Other. Right. And... Um, the reason I, I named it that was because um, it's 93 light years. So by the time it even gets to them, if they even receive it, um, <laughs> we're going to be long gone, unfortunately. <laughs> but um, someone, you know, in the far future, not not too distant future, might pick up something and, and be appreciative of our efforts to send something out in the first place, essentially. Yeah. You know, the truth is, is that, you know, we know there's intelligence out there on the universe and the galaxy. And, you know, there's that one expression, uh, I think it was in Contact, that movie, one of my favorite movies, is, you know, if there's no intelligence, that's an awful lot of wasted space if there's no one else out there. 100%. And, huh? 100%, I agree. Yeah. And and so um, I think it's great that, that you're doing this. And, you know, what better environment to be, you know, sharing this and, and presenting it than, than at Burning Man, where, you know, one of the cool things about their principles is it's radical expression and, and, and acceptance of others. And yeah. so, um, and that's the way that we get to expand ourselves. And that's what's so brilliant about the artists like yourself. It's a gift that we get to have so that we can expand our vision, our perspective of the world, and quite frankly, you know, give us that opportunity to grow. And and ultimately, you said a real key word, which is very much, you know, uh, prominent in all the work that I do on these interviews. It's collaboration, you mm -hmm. know, finding ways just for all of us just simply to collaborate together, just to make this life, this world, you know, humanity just that much better. And, uh -huh. and I like and I like your focus where you're talking about this cabin fever and um, I've never heard it you know, said that way, but uh, you've got a good point. Mm, yeah, and I think there's ways that we can kind of, um, 
you know, most scientists believe at this point that it's not a matter of if it's going to happen, but a matter of when uh, the contact. And basically, we've been sending these messages out. And the most prominent ones are military radar. Um, and one thing that no one's actually addressing in the scientific world, which is all the nuclear testing we've done and, and um, the bombs going off. So when they look right. at the signals that they're getting, they're like, those guys are a bunch of assholes, <laughs> you know? And so, so right. yeah, and so all these scientists that are afraid of uh, civilization coming and destroying us, which is an actual uh, talking point for a lot of scientists. Um, yeah, no wonder it's because we've been broadcasting this uh, hostility and violence into the universe. And I feel like this is, you know, a small way of sending out something maybe that can change their opinion of us. And maybe somebody's going to come and check us out one day. You know, instead of being like, oh, those guys, you know, let's stay away as, as far as we can from them. So, well, I, th I think that's genius and it's brilliant. And, you know, on behalf of humanity, I want to thank you <laughs> for oh. doing that. <laughs> there's, a um, lot, there's a lot of people that uh, say the exact opposite thing on, the, on behalf of humanity. Um, go F yourself. I've gotten a few uh, Internet really? strangers. Yeah, I've gotten a few Internet strangers online that, that are basically harassing me into not doing this project um, right. because of their fears. Um, yeah. You know, one, one thing, um, you know, I've, I've learned from a, a white to hot tribe. These are the tribes in the, in New Zealand and they, they have no rules except for one. And that rule is do no harm. And so when we can do things like this and clear, we're not harming anybody. I mean, I think it's a brilliant thing. And, mm. and I, and I certainly want to thank you. So an important part of this interview, too, by the way, is, you know, how can our community, um, even, you know, spectators that are not part of the community, how can they support you? How can they find you? What kind of support are you needing? Because, again, I just want to emphasize that the brilliance of your work is a lot of work. It's a lot of time. It costs money. And, yeah. you know, in one way or another, I like to show appreciation to you by helping people help you. Yeah, wonderful. We need all the help we can get at this point. Um, you know, the budgets for Burning Man, even though it's an amazing thing, it's they're very small and it's it's uh, reliant upon a lot of collaboration and community support, um, which I feel is beautiful. Unfortunately, uh, my parents aren't very wealthy <laughs> and um, it's hard to um, to raise funds for something uh, that it doesn't doesn't resonate with a, peop a lot of people outside the Burning Command community. Um, uh, and I feel like um, if you wanted to contribute, we're always looking for help, not just financial support, but we're looking for spreading the word, spreading the message. Um, and obviously financial is great. Um, if you go on our website, soloceans.com, you can go and find links to our crowdfunding campaign um, and ways of getting involved. Um, with volunteer help and with remote assistance online um, and just trying to, yeah, just get, get this project into fruition. And right now we're stretched very, very thin. Um, everyone's working a lot. Um, there's a lot on our plates and um, there's beautiful people that are here and we're going to we're releasing videos um, intermittently during the, during the build process to kind of showcase just how beautiful a collaborative art installation can be. Um, and, so I think at the end of the day, even if we don't see any money from any contributors, we're going to be happy in that knowing that we made this thing happen uh, in such a beautiful way with the team that we have. Um, and yeah, anything else is just icing on the cake for us at this point. Well, again, uh, my purpose here is to you know, give you something that you can share with other people, other groups. I'll do the same. I'll get my, my peeps to share it with others. And, um, you know, this is my contribution to the playa. I'm, I'm not an artist in the form that will be beneficial there at the, uh, at the playa, except for maybe supporting or helping you guys. But more importantly, I figured out, you know what, this is my gift. And uh, hopefully a lot of people will see this and really connect with you directly. And we'll add some links uh, afterwards or add some links, uh, you know, at the end of this uh, interview so that people can find you. So any last words you want to share, Ilya? Yeah, I just want to say thank you. Um, and you're doing a great service. And it's uh, something that's not done very often. So you found a very beautiful, uh, 
beautiful little niche to contribute in. Um, yeah, so I just appreciate you. Thank you for everything you're doing and just keep doing it. And yeah. Happy to do it, bro. And uh, I'll see you on the playa. And, and by the way, anytime you want to show some progress, have another interview, bring some of uh, your community on this, I absolutely would love to do it. Oh, totally. We're, we're, we're all stoked. We're interested. That's for sure. Thank you so much, man. All right, Elia. Thanks. Take care.